What's up Disney Infiniteers? Welcome to today's video where we talk about the 3DS version of Disney Infinity. Back when Disney Infinity first released, many fans fell in love with the characters, play sets, and creation suite that was the toy box mode. But as much as all those memories stay with us, there was actually another version of Disney Infinity released outside of the consoles. That's right. Disney Infinity Toy Box Challenge was released on the 3DS system, and today, I wanted to talk about this version, what made it different and inferior to its console brethren. So, what was this game all about? Well, the Toy Box Challenge 3DS version was essentially a Mario Party-esque game. It came with its own base and was fully compatible with the Infinity characters and hexagonal discs from the Disney Infinity 1.0 version. You could control the various characters by scanning them into the game with the base. Same with the hexagonal power discs. The base itself requires two batteries and utilizes the infrared trans receiver technology. Essentially, align your 3DS to the base, prompt the scan, and import your collection into the game. Once you do this, anything that you scan is permanently there for you inside the game. Unfortunately, for the vast majority of my playthrough, the various characters all play the same and the abilities between each are not drastic enough to really give you any real sort of advantage. The modes here are quite simple. The story mode allows you to complete boards and unlock new ones to explore. Quick play allows you to mix and match your own game board. Adventures mode allows you to aim for the high score in the mini games. And there's even a multiplayer mode that allows you to play play with a friend, and this surprisingly works really well. I should also mention that there is a store where you can buy new toys as you progress with in-game currency to fill out your collection. You can also buy new items such as dice to use during gameplay. The game does allow for hexagonal discs as I previously mentioned, and those give you power-ups in certain mini-games that can give you an advantage against the other opponents, depending on the mini-game. And that's the big appeal of this version. The mini -game games themselves. Across the 50 mini-games, you will be solving puzzles, racing, fighting, and collecting various items. It's worth noting that some do stand out more than others, to say the least. I like the use of the dual screen sometimes, like when you're navigating down the river and collecting items, for example, where other games are just kind of uninspired. All in all, the game does a good job of utilizing the 1.0 characters, each with multiple voice lines. There's no task too big or too small for Jack Sparrow, if the pay is right, eh? But the gameplay here is not going to hold anyone over long term. In fact, after completing just a few game boards in story mode, I did feel like I experienced what the game has to offer just a few hours in. That said, it was a separate experience from the consoles, and unique in its own way, even if it did not quite capture the magic of its console counterparts. However, it's a part of Disney Infinity history, and I wanted to talk about my impressions of the game and look back on the 3DS version, which is rarely discussed these days. Also, big shout out to Saffron for capturing in-game footage for me to use. I'll drop a link to his channel in the video description below. So Infiniteers, what do you think of this 3DS version of Disney Infinity? Did you ever play it? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for all the latest Disney Infinity news and content.